Welcome back. This is Rupesh and you are watching CPP.NET video series on C++. And in this video, we will be learning about switch case statements. So before this, we saw how to use if and else statements and nested if and else statement. But there are some drawbacks of using if and else because when it comes to lots of conditions like the requirement could be like user will give input from 1 to let's suppose 100 and if user is giving 1 as input you perform some set of operations like this if user is giving 2 then you perform another set of operations and if user is giving 3 as input you perform some another set of operations okay so like this if it goes to 100 then using if and else like if else and if else if else if else will make your life so tough that you won't be able to manage your program okay so when it comes to these many conditions then we should go for switch case so let's try to see how it works so instead of taking 100 input we can use 3 or 4 inputs and we can simulate the requirement here so integer let's suppose we are keeping the variable name as well here we are taking the input from the user and this is the syntax of using switch cases here so let me write it first then we will understand so this is your whole program here so as you can see this is your switch and case statement okay and as we told the requirement was if user is giving one you execute some set of statement if user is giving two you execute some another set of statements and and if it is three you give another statements and let's suppose user is not giving either one two or three there is this default case this default case will get executed and will get printed something whatever you want to print okay so there is a default case here okay so default case will execute some another set of statements okay so if it is one here so we'll check it like this there is this c and we know how to use this c and then v a l this is our variable this v a l will have some value given by user and then value will be checked in switch statement here so we will have to write it like this switch and then that value so this switch will compare this value whatever we have given with these cases here okay case 1 case 2 case 3 and if it is not getting any case it will execute this default case okay so it works like this let's suppose user have given input as 1 here okay so 1 will come here we will check case 1 yeah this is matching with that one so this is the one which will match with this one so yes it is true so inside this whatever is there will get executed okay so this is the syntax like you have to give this colon here and write your statements and after ending whatever you wanted to do write a break statement here see everywhere we have this break statement okay so we had entered one we came here we printed this like this is one and then we hit this break here then this whole switch will break and will come out of this okay and let's suppose you are printing something here after this switch which is this ending here we can print whatever you want to print here or whatever operation you want to do after this switch okay once this break will execute we will come out okay so let's run this it will be very easier for understanding so this is the same program here let's run this as it is asking me input i will give one see it is taking this is one so i give one this is asking me the value i give the value the value is entered into this variable which is of type integer okay now that value will be checked here and will get compared with these cases so first it will come to this case and it will check whether it is one yes it is one so it will go inside this and it will print this okay now after printing there is another statement this break so once this break is encountered we will end this so if you want i can print something here like and 
of program okay so if we will run this now and give some another input we will be able to see like let's suppose this time we will give 3 here so let's give 3 hit enter see we are coming inside this and how we are coming it is coming first at case 1 it is checking whether this 1 is equal to this 3 no it is not equal so it will go to another case this 2 is equal to this 3 no it is not equal it will come here then th this 3 is equal to this 3 yes it is equal then only it will go inside this that's why it is printing this is 3 okay and once it is printing this one next statement is break here so it is breaking from this whole switch and it is coming out this is how the whole this switch thing work okay and let's suppose you are not giving either 1 2 or 3 let's try to execute this default case here and in order to run this default you will have to give some another value let's suppose uh, you are giving 10 so see it is executing this default case now because 10 is not present in either of these cases so it is running this default okay and after running it it is breaking and coming out so let's try to understand if you will not write this break then what will happen so let's suppose we will remove this break from here we'll remove from here here and here and execute the program and let's suppose you are giving input as 1 and hit the enter see this is the problem here if you are not writing break then it will enter into one case and it will keep on doing all the statements written after that because there is no break so one yes it is true it will come inside this and this is printing this is one this is two this is three and this is default everything is printed let's suppose if you are not having break and you are giving two as the input so it will not go inside this one because this is not matching it will come here and it is matching with two this time it will go inside and it will keep on printing everything so see it is printing 2, 3 and default that 1 is not coming now because it is not going inside 1 because it is 2 here ok so that's why we write break ok and there are some restrictions with switch case you cannot use it with floating point number like 1.7 or 5 and if you are writing it like 1.7 which is like 1.7 is equal to 1.7 or this VAL is having 1.7 and you are writing VAL here what we was doing before so this is not going to work because it doesn't work with floating point numbers okay it works with integer numbers and characters actually it works with the integral value if you don't know what is integral value we'll see in the coming videos for now you just try to understand that not the floating point numbers not string nothing just the integral values which is like 1 10 and all that okay and yes character also work like we can have that example also let's suppose this is a character and you are giving some character here and we know how to use this character thing let's suppose we are having it like this and at last we are having let's suppose this C here and we're done so this is A this is B and another one is C okay so this is okay you can do this character stuff okay so let's give some input a hit enter as you can see it is going into default case so this is default and the input is not matching why because this a is a case sensitive this is a capital a and you are giving small a that's why it is not matching so let's try it again this time you give capital a here then it will work so let's give this capital a hit enter see it is coming inside and it's telling that this is a okay so i think i have covered almost everything if something will be left i'll cover in the next video so now we know how to use this switch case statements let's look at the next video